But my first guest in a couple of minutes will be Miss Sarah McQuaid, a folk artist, and I think her manager Martin will also be joining us o'clock on the Drive Time Show with me, Phil Andrew, and I'm very, very pleased to announce my first musical guest this afternoon. Good afternoon to Sarah McQuaid. Good afternoon to you, Phil. And how are you today? Very well, thank it's, you. It's, it's rather warm in the studio, isn't it? It is, it is. It's toasty. It's toasty. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, love to see you. We've also got Martin, uh, your manager in the studio, but Martin's going to be silent, I believe, isn't he? He's not, uh, not interested in... Yeah, speaks does he <laughs> if i ask him a difficult question <laughs> oh, okay. anyway, well we've got we're going to find out a little bit about you and then uh, you're going to play some tunes for us i think yeah. um of course uh, so uh, i understand you you live in cornwall now i do yeah, yeah i've been living here since 2007 uh, you're definitely well traveled though because you were born in spain mm -hmm. raised in chicago Correct. and you old uh, dual u.s and irish citizenship Indeed. So, well traveled. You've done your research. <laughs> I, I have, I have, yeah. I, I like well, to come done. prepared. It's great because, you know, sometimes I go into radio stations and they say, So, you're from Canada? And yeah. I say, um, No. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so, um, you're actually from, uh, your, your father is Spanish yeah. and you're American, uh, your mum was American. It was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was, yeah. So, uh, but you were raised in Chicago. Exactly, uh, yeah. Raised in Chicago and then we moved to Washington, D.C. Yeah. And then I went to college just outside Philadelphia and then I moved over to to Ireland, which is where my husband's from, yeah. and lived in Ireland for a long time, and then moved to Cornwall, um, gosh, it must be um, six years ago now. Is there anywhere, that, that does Cornwall feel like home to you right now? It does, it, it does. really does, yeah, and I didn't expect that when I moved here, you know, because, I mean, we, we, we moved to, you know, sort of, we're, we're, we're right way down between Penzance and Lens, Land's End yeah. um, in a tiny little village called St. Burien, and I, you know, I had visions, well, especially because it's, it's where Straw Dogs was filmed, you know, and yeah. so I had had visions of walking into the pub and silence falling and mm. you know yeah. but um it hasn't been like that at all it's been really nice mm. and I, I feel like we've uh, I mean we've made some really fantastic friends yeah. and um, really really close friends which I, which I didn't really expect to happen mm. and my kids go to this tiny little local school which is yeah. fantastic there's only about 20 or 30 kids in the whole school and mm. it's really lovely so you were taught piano and guitar by your mum yeah uh, many years ago so uh, so is, I suppose you, your mum is your inspiration kind of kind of yeah. yeah I mean I, I I've, I've had inspiration from lots of areas I mean my um, my my mum played guitar and, and, and piano and, and sang mostly kind of American folk music um, I sang in a children's choir when I was little and we were doing all kinds of music in a huge range of stuff from you know sort of really old kind of 16th century stuff to very contemporary um, material and and then my my uncle um He's a journalist mainly, but he's written a couple of musicals that have mm. been produced. And, mm. and my cousin is musical director for the Dallas Symphony Orchestra. So, so lots of a musical education director for the Dallas yeah. Symphony Orchestra, I should say. So, um, all you know, lots of music right in the family. And uh, and and then I moved to Ireland, started playing yeah. with an Irish band. I lived in France for a while as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, lots of influences. Ireland you moved to in 94 yeah and you were there for 13 years yeah and uh, and it says uh, you were also a music journalist as yeah. well wow uh, so in 2007 uh, you re-released your critical uh, critically acclaimed 97 uh, du uh, duet solo album that was entitled When Two Lovers Meet mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us a little bit about the album yeah I mean that album that album was back when I recorded that album it was just kind of it, it was really for my own pleasure and edification more than anything else it was just some, kind of something I wanted to have done before I died you know, yeah. I had all these songs that I'd been singing and, and performing an odd time, and yeah. and I just I just thought let's get it out there, and and then I'll have done it, and it doesn't matter if nothing ever happens with it. Mm. At least I'll have I'll have made that. But then the album got really really good reviews, mm. and um, and I was offered a couple of really nice opportunities. I, I I went on a little tour doing support for a wonderful artist called Luca Bloom, and mm. he was very encouraging, and so all these sort of encouraging things kept happening, and then I wound up getting a job and having kids and mm -hmm. kind of let the whole thing slide for a while and then uh, wound up getting back into it pretty much by accident because I was asked to give a guitar workshop mm. at a festival and I was all set to say no until they had told me who I was going to be co-presenting the workshop with right. and it was a wonderful guy called Dick Gahan and I just thought mm. I can't if I say no to this I'm just going to be kicking myself for the rest of my life so I said yes yeah. uh, Right so the same year I uh, saw you move back to England uh, you were playing big festivals like the Sidmouth and uh, Trowbridge yeah. and then in 2008 you uh, released your second album entitled I Won't Go Home Till Morning was there a great difference 
difference between the first and this particular album? Yeah, quite a big difference. Um, the first album was mostly traditional Irish material and one of my own songs. And the mm. second album was more the... And my mother had died um, just uh, the year before I made the album, and um, or a few years before I made the album. And so she was on my mind a lot. And I was thinking back to a lot of the music that she was very fond of and used to sing and, and play, which is more the sort of American Appalachian um, stuff. Mm. And then I, I wrote a couple of songs for that album as well. And, uh, and again, it was quite nicely received critically, which, which came as a surprise to me. <laughs> I didn't expect it. I didn't expect it to get radio airplay, yeah. and it really did. Uh, well, moving on to the other album, uh, was this was entitled Crow Coyote Buffalo. Oh, yeah, that's the album I made with Zoe. Yeah. And that came as a direct result of moving to Cornwall and, mm. and sending my kids to St. Levin School. Zoe, um, I just knew her initially as a fellow mum at the school, and yeah. it was only after I'd known her for a while that I discovered that she had a bona fide hit single back in 1991 with a song that she wrote and performed on Top of the Pops mm. and all those shows called Sunshine on a Rainy Day, which mm. your listeners will probably remember. It went to number five in the charts and stayed on the, stayed at number five for a long time, I think 16 weeks yeah. or something like that. And, uh, and it was a great success. And she and I started writing songs together purely accidentally. Um, she, she came, she was at my house and she started playing me a song she'd written and I... I said, I really like that. Um, I really like that melody, but I can't understand the lyrics you're singing. What are? What, what, could you write them down for me? And she said, oh, no, I don't have any lyrics for that. Right. I'm just singing nonsense syllables. That's why you don't understand it. <laughs> and, she, and I said, well would you like some lyrics? And she said, oh yeah, could you write some lyrics? Brilliant. And um, and then she just kept feeding me melodies and I kept writing lyrics. And before we knew it, we had a whole album sort of songs, um, which we recorded with the help of Martin, who's sitting here very patiently, mm. stewing in the heat mm. beside me. And uh, Martin produced and engineered that album. And that's how the two of us started working together. And it got great mm. reviews. I remember we were, we were described by one reviewer as two pagan goddesses channeling the ghost of Jim Morrison. <laughs> that's my favorite quote. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I love it. I was, I was going to mention it, but you just done that for me. Yeah, I, I, that is a great. That's a great. Isn't it quote. just? It is. Yeah. Another. The Irish Times said that we had the. Um, oh, what was the freewheeling spirit of Janis Joplin and the lyrical density of Joni Mitchell? Right. I don't know what lyrical density is. It, it, I don't know, either. Might, might be good. Might be bad. <laughs> so anyway, it's, it's nice to see you're also uh, the author of the Irish Dad Gad, a guitar book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? And yeah, Dad Gad is the tuning I play in all the time. I've been playing in nothing but dad gad for about a long long time now and um and it's it's really nice because because you have three different strings tuned to d and two different strings tuned to a mm. you get a lot of what's called sympathetic resonance so the strings that you're not actually touching are still resonating and sounding in mm. in sympathy with the strings you are playing so you get this really full lush sound which is particularly nice when mm. you're a solo artist like myself mm. uh, so this is this is a kind of a, a nice book to pick up if you're trying to learn those kind of uh, sounds yeah so yeah your, your first two albums were re-released uh, as double cds in north america in february of 2010 and immediately went to number one that's that's a number one on the folk chart. Folk chart. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it would be nice if it was yeah, on yeah. pop chart, but no. It was I, was gonna, the, I was getting to the folk the, bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's a, that's a fantastic achievement, though, isn't yeah. it, for America? You yeah. know? Uh, many artists are trying to break America in, in any genre, really. But if, yeah. uh, right, your new album, uh, which was released uh, March of last year, uh, The Plum Tree and the Rose, um, uh, this went to number three on the folk DJ chart. On the folk chart. DJ chart. Yeah, yeah. in March. Uh, and it's done equally as well in other countries. I've had a listen to the album. Uh, I must admit, a couple of my favourite tracks, I hope you don't mind me saying, uh, Lift You Up and Let You Fly. I like that one. Uh, the sun goes on rising. Oh, goodie. Um, I'm going to play that one for brilliant. you. Brilliant. <laughs> I'd love to hear that live. That's brilliant.